Hey everyone, it's Dr. Lauren, and you're listening to the She Slays the Day podcast. And this is episode 48. Um, okay, so full disclosure, today we are going to start getting back to normal a little bit. Um, I am kind of sick of talking about COVID. Um, so the interview that I have today is with Dr. Beth Westy and it was so good. We recorded it March 13th, which is actually, I mean, it was, I, I don't know if this is in the pre-recording or in the actual beginning of the conversation, but you'll, we kind of talked about like, oh, I wonder if schools are going to get closed down. That's weird. They did that in other states. And literally that afternoon at four o'clock, I got notification that schools were closed indefinitely in our area. And for her, it happened on like Monday because she's in Minnesota. Um, so besides that little reference to like, huh, I wonder what'll happen. Like there, this is about hormones. This is about periods. This is about weight loss. This is about like fueling your body during the times of the month. It is good. It is beautiful. It is relevant. And it is nothing to do with COVID. Um, so how am I doing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Thanks. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of, you know, I like everyone am going back and forth between my Enneagram type. So like I'm a three. So I have these moments of like productivity where I'm like, heck yeah, we're going to do a virtual health summit and it's going to be amazing. And I like get these balls rolling in motion. And then like the next day I wake up and threes go to nine during times of stress. And I'm just annoyed by everybody in my inbox um, being like subject lines, like all you need is a vision, like 10 things to get you through right now. And I'm just like, shut up, just shut up all of you. I don't want you in my inbox anymore. I don't want you on my social media anymore. Like, and I just want to wear sweatpants and be a nine. Um, and nines tend to be uh, nines have great characteristics, but when a three goes to a nine during times of stress, it's usually being lazy and not having motivation to do anything. Um, so yeah, you know, I feel like, so right now it's, what is it? It's Wednesday, April 15th. And like Monday of Tuesday of this week, I felt good. I felt like, okay, we're supposed to peak this week. And I'm ready to start putting the pieces back to normal. Um, you know, not saying I'm going to flip a switch, but like, what are some of the areas that I can start taking baby steps towards back to normal? Um, so I am not claiming that I am not binge eating or drinking my emotions. Uh, but I did say like, all right, I'm going to start some intermittent fasting. So at least I have like a time limit in which I'm allowed to eat the pan of brownies and my feelings. Um, yeah, you know, back to that, like all these people in my inbox and on Facebook Live and this and that. How come like the people I actually want to hear from right now are being quiet? Like where are all the accountants and financial advisors and bankers? How come my feed is just full of like Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher trying to interpret the SBA loans? They're the only person I want in my inbox right now is U.S. Bank saying, hey, girl, you've been approved for your PPP loan. Where are you? All right. Anyways, you know what? Let's do a listener review. Uh, I'm not going to say this person's name because I didn't really get their approval to read this, but they sent it to me on Facebook and they listened to the show, so they probably know I'm going to talk. So it says, OK, I never DM podcast people I listen to, but I feel I had to send you a DM. What got me to your podcast was the famous loan episode a few weeks ago. Famous. I like that she called it. It was a famous episode. Yeah, it was. Um, I like your honesty and down to earth conversations in all the episodes I've listened so far. But yesterday I listened to the episode you recorded for the WDC convention. I felt in some way you were personally talking to me. So she's talking about episode 47. Just that what happened last week. Your words at the end almost brought tears to my eyes. I've been struggling with my emotions for the last few weeks, but more so accepting them. Yes, I also ate almost the whole box of brownies I baked a few weeks ago. What I wanted to tell you is that your words made me accept a little bit more that it's okay for me to feel all of this roller coaster of emotions. So thank you, praise hands. Oh, so thank you. Um, I know, I know I on one side say like, I'm not an affirmations person or touchy feely, but like, 
I legit value those messages and those reviews as they pop up, pop up throughout my day. Um, it's almost like they're divinely timed, where it's almost always like where I'm just like, ah, I hate life, burn it all to the ground. What is this? I'm moving to India. Um, and then I get like this message that you guys like listen to an episode and it did something for you. And it's like, oh, this is good. This is all good. This is worth it. You're on track. You're where you're supposed to be right now. Calm the F down, Lauren. So thank you, because I know that like there's so much happening right now. And a lot of us don't take the time to send that note, um, to write that message, to do leave that review. Um, and it is one of the best things that you can do for all the small businesses in your life, all your favorite podcasts, all your people who are out there uh, trying to be helpful if they're doing something for you, like take the time, write them a note, leave them a review. Like it is so motivating, so motivating. Okay, so let's talk about who we have on the episode today. So today's a little longer episode. And honestly, like I feel bad because I left an hour and a half for my talk with Dr. Bath and um, I've never gone over an hour with people and her and I just kept talking. And so I had an, I was being interviewed at a certain time. And so like, I was like watching the time going, I'm like, oh crap, I got to wrap this up. Like, so this is somebody I'm going to have to have back on the show because I could have talked for another 45 minutes for sure with Dr. Beth. I had so many other questions. Um, to talk to her about. So hopefully Dr. Beth will come back on. She does have um, a podcast. So if you like her, you can go listen to her podcast. Um, she talks about it um, on the show. It's the Female Health Solution podcast. But yeah, so Dr. Beth is the author of the best-selling book, The Female Fat Solution. She's the creator of the 12 week female fat solution challenge and the host of the female health solution podcast. She's made it her mission to change the way women view their health traveling the country to educate and empower women to take their health into their own hands. She uses nutrition to help women work with the natural cycle of their bodies to achieve lasting weight loss results. Um, she's really personable, funny, great, great person. I enjoyed this interview a lot. And, you know, I said it has nothing to do with COVID, but, um, you know, talking about like, we didn't really get into weight loss. I wish that was like what I had a ton more questions on. Um, but we talk about the cycle and eating for your cycle and your hormones and like, oh my gosh, we cover so many different things. Uh, because she is also an ADHD squirrel like me. So I hope you like it. Um, before we jump in though, I will kick us off in prayer. Dear God, thank you for these people. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for them connecting on this. I hope that um, I'm not being insensitive. You know, I, I know in my frustration, I start to get like, blah, <laughs> the less gentle side of me comes out. Um, and that's so true with all of us. Uh, help us as we are all kind of at our wits end. And it's hard to be at your wits end and not and have to keep being at the wits end. Like what's hap what happens after the end? What happens after like you're like, well, I was at my wits end, end two weeks ago and this is going to continue for another month or two. So I know that people in my life are not getting the best version of me. I assume that a lot of people listening, the people in their life are not getting the best version of them. So help us to start to recover, help us to start to get back to normal a minute at a time, uh, help us feel no shame and just feeling those emotions. And it's okay that we had a good day and then it was followed by what seems like the worst one. So many people listening are chiropractors. Help us remember the words we say to our patients on a daily basis. Healing is not linear. And so just like every day is not going to necessarily be better than the next, as long as we can look back and go, I am heading the right direction. I am moving the right direction. I will grant my body, my mind, my spirit, that grace and that love. Thank you so much for bringing all of this together and your awesomeness. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, peeps. 
You might have to break this one down into two sessions, uh, but it's awesome and worth listening until the very, very end. All right, here you go. Here's Dr. Beth West. Um, I'm just fascinated, like, with people who have their husbands work with them. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm, like, I'm obsessed with, like, like, stalking. I'm going to stalk you now. Yeah, um, we are weird communicators. Yeah, I, I think it's fascinating. I think it's absolutely fascinating because my husband, again, my biggest supporter, too. Holy ball sacks. I would never have him work with me. I can't even like I he's so like personality profile wise. We are totally opposite. Do you know your Um, any? Um, no, but I've done like this profile and like the Colby index Mm -hmm. and all these things. I am a like leader and an integrator and like, you know, so I, I'm a very friendly, like bubbly chatty person under stress I become very direct and I'm like let's just get this done like oh it's time to go get your shoes on out the door and he'll be like why are you mad at me (laughs) oh my god you're totally a three and a nine (laughs) he'll be like why I'm like I'm not mad we just need to go like enough of the fluff fluff goes away tuck it away pack it up it's time to let's just do this right Mm -hmm. he's like no I think you're mad we have you have feelings right now I'm feeling very you know, triggered by this, we need to talk about this before we 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 shouldn't even go now. Like, get in the car, we need to go <laughs> now. I'm gonna get mad because you're not doing it, and you're talking about feeling. Well, so it sounds like he would do really well working with you. You oh. might just need to learn how to have a little more feelings. Oh yeah, I don't have feelings. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we go to a marriage counselor for fun mm-hmm. um, oh yeah we have oh yeah a year now and our therapist just like we'll talk mostly to each other for like 10 minutes and then if we hit kind of a road we'll like turn to him and we'll be like hey Darren what do you think and he just looks at us and he's accused us a couple times in a nice way of like putting on a show for him he's like is this how you guys just talk to each other like it feels like you're spreading a layer of frosting on this like is this how you communicate and we're just like uh-huh this is like this is what we do we just talked about things and feelings and like self-growth at nauseum and for the most part it works out yeah so yeah, yeah working together fascinating it's pretty good as the big thing is is understand we've figured out we're like personality profile obsessive and um that helps you know because I am super direct like I am when I get stressed I literally am like I don't want you to breathe near me because I need to check these four things off on this list before I can even like come up for air yeah so like don't ask me if I want lunch don't ask me if I'm stressed duh I'm stressed can you see me like but I promise (laughs) you know and he'll be like are you okay and like I'm going to be okay once I check these things off. (laughs) Let me check the things off. And so he now knows that that is not like me disrespecting him. Yeah. It is, it is uh, just my personality under stress. Yeah. Um, So I know then I kind of like when I do come up for air go like, oh, shoot, that wasn't respectful. And your personality is very sensitive to being disrespected. And so, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. That's like me and my husband almost to a T I'll be in the kitchen doing dishes and like cleaning stuff up. And I'm like, okay, I'll do the dishes. I still have these emails to send. And then I'm going to get the kids to bed. Right. Like the list of never ending things. And he'll come up behind me and like hug me and be like, "Mm." you're so great you're so and I have to like stop like the river of rage that is bubbling over and I'm like thank you I appreciate you so much for you know telling me and and communicating this with me my love language is acts of service Mm -hmm. your love language is like physical touch and words of affirmation so you want to sit and like cuddle and like oh so nice and all of my, like, all my girlfriends are like, oh my God, that's so sweet. He's so sweet. He loves you. Oh, he's telling you and he wants to hug you. And I'm like, get off. I'll do the dishes. That's why I love you. Look at the dishes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. I think that you are a mirror. Yep. You guys are yeah. very similar to us. So That's hilarious. That's hilarious. We should tell people who you are. 
Oh, we should tell. Yeah. Are we starting now? Is this- <laughs> yeah. I, I think <laughs> probably we started like five, 10 minutes ago, but, um, Hey, Dr. Beth. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so I'm super excited. Obviously, um, you know, this is for those who are listening, you might think like, wow, these two must go way back. No, we're just like probably both Enneagram threes who have personalities for podcasts and we click. Um, so we found each other through the virtual world. Um, and I started looking at your podcast topics cause it was interesting. I was like, Oh, I really want to have her on like, okay, what, what do I want to kind of steer the conversation around? Because although I never really have a good idea. I at least try and have like some goalposts of, I don't know, some kind of guardrails. Um, yeah. and I was looking at your podcast episodes and I was like, Ooh, Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, we could talk about that too. So I'm not really sure where this conversation is going to go, but why don't we start with you answering the question? You know what it is. I was like, oh tell us about yourself. <laughs> okay. So the two minute version um, breaks down more than two minutes. You can give okay. us a five minute version. Okay. But if you go <laughs> over five minutes, I'll buzz you up. I mean, start. No. no. Um, so I grew up in Minnesota. I actually grew up on a small goat farm. I was in 4 H, did all the, you know, goat farm kid things. Mm-hmm. And I was an athlete growing up, a uh, three sport athlete in high school. I did volleyball, basketball, track. I got a scholarship to play volleyball at Northern Michigan. Um, and, you know, going into college, my mission was just to get school paid for. I knew I didn't want to, um, you know, continue on past that going in. I knew I wanted to go to graduate school or do something beyond. At the time entering school, um, I was actually a pre-med student. And then throughout college, just you know, with, with sport and everything, you know, things just kind of shift and change in your life. I had a, I had a knee injury, a knee surgery that sort of really solidified my decision to not play beyond. Cause I'd gotten invitations to play on some different professional volleyball teams in Europe. Professional volleyball isn't that big in the U S unless you play in the Olympics, but overseas in Australia and Europe, it is bigger. Um, so I got recruited to those, some of those teams, but decided, you know, Hey, my body's not going to last forever. And I don't want to beat the crap out of it. I want to have mm-hmm. kids that I can pick up someday. So, um, after knee surgery and everything, I, uh, just kind of changed paths. And then as I was finishing up school, I actually went to massage therapy school for fun. Like I literally saw a flyer on the wall and I was like, this sounds fun. I don't know. I'm not going to have practice any day. This is, <laughs> this is great. Why not this? My massage therapy instructor was phenomenal like opened up the whole world of natural health learned all the things and I discovered that I loved working with my hands and being pre-med and I was actually studying to take the MCAT everything else and then all of a sudden I was like my instructor was like well what are you going to do after this and I was like well I'm pre-med da, 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 da. he goes so you're going to sit in a you know clinic room all day and just write prescriptions and I was like ooh that doesn't sound fun yeah that sounds terrible well and what's funny is that I'd seen a chiropractor since I was 16 snowboarding I fell Mm -hmm. couldn't stand up so um you know because I was trying to go off of a jump and be cool because I wasn't clearly those of us that have been in school for like 23 years right we're like we're not cool we're not cool cool. we're very socially awkward and Mm -hmm. side note for the chiros that listen to this I used to have to practice when I would go in and meet a new patient I practiced for hours I'm not kidding hours and I would tape myself and everything walking into a room because I was so awkward and I would sweat and I'd be like that's a stranger (laughs) because we read so much like I was not that crazy like I'm not socially normal no we're not socially normal we're not I made sure in school that I like really utilized my weekends to be socially you know normal so like it was technically a part of training to like go out drinking (laughs) like I didn't want to but I heard rumors that if you study too much you become Mm -hmm. a dork yeah yeah you know that's a dang it I missed my opportunity. You missed your opportunity to be cool. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did because I started having babies then. That was my 
Downfall. Not downfall. I love them. They're so great. Kids are so great. Have a million. Yeah, yeah, I have to. That's my mind. I can't tell you how many times on this show I've been like, this is going to sound like I don't like my kids, but I really actually do love my kids. I promise. But like, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes it is. It is a different world. It really is. Yeah. So I went from thinking I was going to be, you know, a medical doctor. I wanted to be a pediatrician to working with my hands. And in a very short amount of time, a few months, completely changed directory. Mm-hmm. fell in love with natural healing, natural health care, and, you know, you know, applied and got into a few different Cairo schools and then chose the one back in Minnesota because I went to school in Michigan, moved back you to Minnesota. To yeah. When did you graduate? Not, uh, 2009, 2009. So we were there at the same time. Yeah, probably. Well, we just didn't know each other because I was too busy being cool. And, you, and I was too busy <laughs> getting knocked up. That's the, so you, okay. So yeah, I graduated October of 2010. Yeah. Um, which normally they don't graduate people in October, but I was the class. Um, you were like the last class they did that. The last la- class. And they said like, if you're going to Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Oh. Yeah. So in 2011, like J- they is when Wisconsin was like, you know what? we can handle a national board. Like, so in order to get your license, you had to go through Wisconsin's own like part four boards. And there was just like rumors already that it was going to be terrible. Um, and so they're like, all right, if you're planning on practicing in Wisconsin, we're going to let you graduate a month early so you can get your license. before. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so yeah. So we were really yeah. at the same time. Yeah, we were. Yeah. So you I got there. pregnant in chiropractic school? Uh, yeah. Twice. <laughs> I wish you guys could see her face right now. That was good. That so was good. You were married, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> you also just missed my face on that one. Yeah. So my husband and I, we've been together for 18 years, right? Okay. Now. Um, we met in college. He uh, moved back to Minnesota with me. We got engaged. And my in my head, right, my perfect plan A was I'll go to graduate school. I'll graduate, we'll get married, and then we'll have babies, la 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 la. Mm-hmm. I got done with my first year of school and got pregnant. This was so I was raised very Catholic. Uh, mm. this did not go over well. I'll no. that putting it very lightly. Like it was even though you guys have been together like six, six years. years. Yeah, yeah. Like we started dating um two thousand one and my son was born in two thousand six. So it was like on both sides of the family at the time, the hugest deal in the world. And I was like, listen, people, I'm not the first person in the world to, you know. And I always wonder with that, like, like come on. So is, are they mad that you were having sex and they didn't know? Are they mad that you were, we were stupid enough? <laughs> are they mad that you were stupid enough to not be using? contraceptives of any sort or are they more concerned about your soul in eternity like are they like I'm okay like I knew you were having sex but now that you're pregnant Jesus is gonna know you were having sex and now I just don't know what's gonna happen to the soul is the baby like yeah okay right it was it was a very it was a very very big deal um yeah. And it was, I think more to do with what other people would think. And I didn't care. Right. I was like, listen, I'm not a floozy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, like we've been together a while. I'm not worried about this. Like he, I know he's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Like he, if I was going to pick anybody and create the perfect person to be the most amazing dad ever, it would be him. That's why I was like <laughs> decided to have kids with them. Yeah. Like my mom, My parents are married, but my mom raised us. My Mm -hmm. dad was not really a part of the picture. So when I went to choose a person to have kids with, I was like, I'm not going to do it by myself. And I remember very early on in our relationship, I remember we were on a beach one time and I got caught up talking with some people and I literally lost him. And I was like, oh my God, where is he? Where is he? This is like 30 minutes and I can't find him. I went and found him at a park, right? Like real close at a park with a bunch of kids playing hide and go seek. He got bored listening to me talk with a bunch of people and he went to go play with some kids. And I was like, okay, this guy. That could be interpreted very sweet. 
or yeah. very creepy. Right. Very <laughs> creepy. And you went with sweet. It obviously yeah. worked out for you. <laughs> <laughs> very sweet. Well, he was like, that was boring. You guys are talking about boring stuff. I want to go have fun. You know, I want to, they're, they're, they're running around. That was, fun. I was like, okay, cool. And he was like the biggest baby person. He loves babies. He loves kids. So I was like, okay. And then when he did get pregnant, I was on the pill. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. I was on the pill and uh, it was, yeah, total. Is this that whole like antibiotics make your pill? No. No? This, this was, I went through a whole year of graduate school and lots of stress and the stress impacted my system. So I got pregnant on our August break. My kids were born all so within two weeks of each other. Can literally, and by the way, like, <laughs> um, I love that we're actually talking about the fact that you were on the pill because like, yeah. I feel like so much, there's so many opportunities for women to be shamed within chiropractic. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, you're not supposed to be on the pill. And it's like, oh my gosh. Um, so anyways, so stress made your pill not effective. Yeah. Holy shit. All right, yeah. listening. Be careful. <laughs> if there be was careful. Ever, be really careful. Okay. This was, yeah, this was real. This is, and I remember I was, you know, we were going through a bunch of different things, you know, getting, you know, through, you know, the third try. And I remember being like, okay, something's like off. Like I've been on the same pill for a really long time. I've never had issues with it. And all of a sudden I'm getting my cycle. I'm in my period like twice a month. What the heck? I called the nurse line and they were like, oh, it's fine. I was like, you're taking it every day. I was like, listen, I am clockwork with this you know, pill. I've been on it for a decade. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Clearly. Oh. And then, um, yeah, August break happened and yes. And then all of a sudden I was like, Oh, wow. Some, yeah. Yeah. You and got then, pregnant around year one of Cairo school. Just after the first year. So I just finished all the anatomy labs. Mm-hmm. Um, three you can't be in the cadaver labs when you're pregnant. So I had just finished all of that, thank mm. goodness, mm-hmm. and gotten beyond that. Um, but it was it was really, really rough, honestly. And in terms of getting through school, it, it was honestly such a big thing with the families and all of that stuff that I set very strict boundaries. And I, I actually um, went part time okay. in school for a year. It, it was just, it was hard. I was like, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be so the first person in my family. Credits. Yeah. Um, you know, the first person in my family to get a doctorate, I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm just going to have to figure out how to do this. And if you guys are going to be jerks about it, I'm not going to, you know, have it in my sphere because it's going to, that's going to derail me and I'm not going to let anything derail me. So yeah. So yeah, see, this is a really like short story long. Um, I know the five minute buzzer, like, I don't know. I was, was, I was lying. Ago. I was lying. <laughs> Basically, I haven't cut you off yet. That means I'm not bored. That's yeah. Uh, well, this is good though. Cause if, if people are in school right now, mm-hmm. it, realize that it's not a race. You don't need to, you know, whatever. I've gone back and done talks at my school because my story going through it is really different. And there was a lot of life things that happened that were just shitty. And you know what? I still graduated. I still ha- I had a very successful clinic. I do very well now. I built a whole nother business um, based off of what I learned and what I know, but it's not a race. Just like keep going and just keep thinking of the big picture really is what I, is what I tell students a lot of the time. Um, but it was going through all of that was really, really, really rough. Um, so is that then- when you got fat? You no. had to be fat at some point, right? You I, all, like, we haven't even gotten people. People who don't know you are like, holy shit, Lauren, why did you just ask that? So <laughs> you guys can't know this, but okay. So I'm putting these pieces together in my head and this is where the ADHD is going. I'm like, okay, right now I'm looking at you. You are obviously a very fit person. Be. You're not fat now. Um, you were a professional or almost a professional volleyball player. Mm-hmm. But a lot of what your platform is, is like losing belly fat and weight. So that yeah. tells me that like you had to have gone through that at some point, right? Yeah. You can't be a skinny person preaching to people how yeah. hard it is to lose weight, right? 
Right. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. And there was everybody. You can calm down. She wasn't offended. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's fair. It's fair. I mean, I went through some different health things. Like I went off of gluten, all this other stuff that shifted like the inflammation in my body. I look different, so different now than I did in college or high school. I looked like puffy before because gluten. Um, so all that stuff is really different, but so after my first kid, I actually had thyroid issues. So I actually lost a lot of weight Mm. in a terrible way, (laughs) really Mm -hmm. struggled. Um, and then I got back into the swing of things, everything else. We got married, you know, one of the jokes I made a, yeah, I made, I made a joke. It was funny. Like I was getting married. We were getting married and and people be like, Oh, is he okay with you having a kid? I was like, it's his kid. So I hope so. (laughs) so. What? And it was just, again, so much of a fiasco and disaster with things that I, we had a surprise wedding. So we just invited people to a park and we had a judge show up and marry us. Oh, yep. And, um, and I remember I told my mom before, you know, like the day before that we were actually going to be getting married. So she didn't melt down. And she was like, well, what are you going to wear? You're not going to wear white. Are you? I was like, well, mom, who's going to know, you know? <laughs> and she was like, looking at my son. Like, that's not like, I don't, she didn't think that was funny. Like there was no jokes about that right yeah <laughs> not funny not amusing and I'm like come on like, your right. mom seems like a hoot we should have her on the show oh my god she's a okay she is like a brilliant person even more socially awkward than I am but just like she's like yeah that's not amusing just wait I'll I'll tell you one of the things she said later too about something that something still floors me so we get married the next year and then after that you know, I found out I was pregnant again. And so, still not graduated. Not graduated. Keep not, it in your pants, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> My husband is very cute. I. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I got pregnant again. I am um, the pill. I, I didn't want to be in the pill again um, because of the thyroid issues, everything else, endocrine wise trying not to do that. I am not a candidate for an IUD or other types of birth control because I have a bilobuterus, mm. which leads to other complications. Yeah. Super fun. Not. Um, so uh, we were just trying, you know, trying to be religious with using condoms and clearly that does not work. Should have told your mom, like, mom, we were doing the Catholic family planning. Apparently it doesn't work. <laughs> right. Bad at it. Oh my God. Yeah. So I got pregnant again which was, you know, of course, like, this was also an August break that I, I got pregnant. It, so was come back August break for you guys. it was, yeah, all my kids have birthdays at the end of April. That's mm-hmm. literally. So I remember coming back to school and everybody was like, Oh, my God, how was your break? And was like, Yeah, so fun. I did this trip or Oh, so great. Relax. And they'd be like, Well, what'd you do? I'd be like, I got knocked up again. <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't find out until after we graduated. This was at our graduation party. So we graduated and we all went out to the bars, you know, for a party or whatever. And I heard somebody talking behind me and they were talking about something. And all of a sudden I heard my name and I was like, what? And then I listened and they were like, yeah, pregnant Beth, blah, blah, blah. That was my nickname. Pregnant Beth. They called me pregnant Beth. because So we didn't know each other because I was always like pregnant, you know, <laughs> or nursing, you know, I have like my doctor bag, my pump, you know, all this stuff, walking around mm-hmm. school. I was not cool. I was not cool. I did not do any of the fun things. I was busy popping babies out and trying to raise them. So. This makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See? So I had a nanny as well. This is how I did all the things. People ask me that. How did you? Nanny. Mm-hmm. Nanny. My husband, he's a brick mason, so he does very well. <laughs> he was basically <laughs> supporting all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh very sweet and you grim nine that we're we're pretty sure he's a nine I've yeah already. yeah very sweet like so supportive of the dreams and everything so um so I had her graduated and graduated from Cairo school um took part four boards you know because of the timing stuff when I went part-time and everything was a little bit weird took part four passed um bought a clinic um and also in that summer I had a miscarriage oh. Yeah, but again, not planned. Yeah. Started a business, um, started a clinic in September and then found out I was pregnant again in October. Okay. Yep. And then this time my mom was like, aren't you a doctor now? 
Can't we figure this out? <laughs> Did you learn how to make this? <laughs> okay, yeah. so you bought a clinic in what month? Uh, September. Okay, and found and out then, you're in October. Well, yeah. that's a, that's really nice timing. <laughs> no, right? And then uh, she was actually born. I was 33 weeks. Um, so because of complications and everything that I have. My second, she was a, I labored for about 12 hours because I tried to do a VBAC, but she was an emergency C-section. And then my third, she was, uh, I, my, I had a placental abruption at 33 weeks, wow. another emergency C-section. So that threw a whole wrench into my business, office, everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, I really was not succeeding at that time. That was one of the biggest things in terms of, okay, how do I flip and do this? Mm-hmm. And she was in the NICU for 23 days. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, she's like, so again, testament to chiropractic care. She, I mean, I was healthy. I took all the supplements, did all the things. Um, when she was adjusted, we, I had Dr. Spicer. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Spicer came and adjusted her in the NICU. And every time she got adjusted, she would just skyrocket in feeding and sleeping and gaining weight and all the things, which is, you know, so she was born. And that, you know, and had a tough time at first, but really just started to skyrocket in terms of her um, results because she was getting adjusted. Like it got the last time um, Spicer came to visit. I'm using Yep, quotes. yep, yes. Air quotes. <laughs> I'm sure Spicer had <laughs> visit. Yep, she just visited. Yeah. The nurses in the NICU were like, okay, this lady comes in. And then within 24 hours, things drastically change positively for your baby. What's happening? Like, what's she doing in there? They were very, they literally lined up outside the door and I had to close the curtain on them and be like, no, I'm sorry. We're just having a private conversation in here. You don't get to see. Yep. That was, it was, yeah. But that's how powerful it is. Like, I know she doesn't have any, I remember I was on a plane one time, just happened to be talking to like an osteopath and I was talking, he was asking about kids and stuff and he worked with preemies and I said, I have, you know, one of mine was a preemie and he said, Oh, well, what, what, how many weeks? I said, 33. He goes, how's her asthma? And I was like, she doesn't, she doesn't have asthma. No asthma. No, no, no asthma, no breathing problems, nothing. And I was like, well, she gets adjusted. She gets adjusted. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, so everything's fine. Right. And my business was not doing that well, but I was, uh, very determined and I'm a driver. So I wasn't really going to let anything stop me still. So I, um, just went balls to the wall with marketing, getting out there, building a practice, everything else. Um, so my daughter was born in 2012 or 2010 and by 2012. So within two years, I had tripled, almost quadrupled my practice. Wow. And it was because I busted it and I didn't let the kids stop me. And so I literally would go to events, do chair massage, meet people in the community, all this stuff. I had a baby in a front carrier. Sometimes I'd have a baby in the backpack too. And I had another one with me and I would go around and do all these things. And just, that's how I built my clinic. I took mm-hmm. my kids with me. You had to hustle. I, yep. Yeah, I hustled. It's good I, to, I like having, hearing your perspective because when I, talk to people like new startups or people who are about to start up. Yeah. You know, I am just like, yeah, it's really nice to talk about like being 10 years in practice and how I only adjust 15 hours a week and yada, yada, yada. But like, I don't want you to think that that's how it started. I busted my ass in the beginning. And yeah. then, and then like people are like, Oh, okay. And then people are like, well, what if you have kids? And I'm like, well, I guess push them in a stroller while you're handing out flyers because yep. they're, yeah, you don't I, that's, have it both. Like that's exactly what I did. I was working 70 hours a week, mm-hmm. and I only had a nanny for 40 hours. That means that I was at places I legitimately. My son was four. We had an event at a county fair. And we were in a commercial building, right? Like, like the standard thing. Mm-hmm. I gave him a stack of coupons and I was like, buddy, nobody gets out of this building unless they have one of these flyers. Who's going to turn down a kid? Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. 
Yeah. And then I would go home. Next stay market night, I'm just going to go. Print and up cut. Oh yeah. I would, you know, they'd get balloons and all this stuff. They loved being there and they have nothing but positive memories of mm-hmm. coming to work with mama and doing, cause I gave them a job and, and honestly, a lot of, a lot of patients would say, I like, I love that this is you and you're being you and I get to meet you and talk to you. But that like, this is, you know, I'm not like, I like this marketing. Yeah. I would actually uh, recommend that if you don't have children, just borrow somebody's now. <laughs> borrow somebody's kid. Kids borrow are big. Borrow somebody's kid to bring to your marketing event. That's the yeah. takeaway from this podcast. Yeah. It's am- it was amazing. It, and it was, you know, it was tough. It was a struggle. I mean, I had times that I was at the booth and I was nursing and I forgot the nursing pads and I like leaked all, leaked all over, keep an extra shirt, but you know, you make do, you keep going, you keep and plugging. Sure, and I mean, I'm sure it sucked while you were going on it. It's so much easier now to look back at those times and like kind of laugh and be like, oh, you know, and it's so easy to like see the silver lining and the beauty, the beauty yeah, in yeah. the chaos. But like, yeah. if you are currently in the chaos, don't oh. think you're doing it wrong. If you're like, but Beth, I'm crying on my way to my marketing event with my kids. Like, yeah, she probably does too. Don't worry. You won't remember in five years. <laughs> five years, they're going to be like, yes, I busted it. Awesome. Yay. But um, this was the beginning of the time where I will say got fat and had trouble. So because of how much I was working, I had a a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a preemie, and I'm busting my ass to get my business off the ground. And it worked, you know, within two years, having a practice. I mean, I was seeing, you know, 175 people a week then, you know, within a couple of years. So that, you know, that, that was really, really good. Mm -hmm. And it, I you know, with thyroid issues, everything else, I really struggled. But the biggest thing that started after I had my third was ovarian cysts. Okay. I started getting ovarian cysts. It was the stress. It was the no sleep. It was everything. And I, it would, they would, they would burst every month for eight, about a year and a half. This happened. I would get a cyst. It would burst and it would put me on the floor. Just awful. And I couldn't function. I couldn't do things for a while. Like then I'd have to read, you know, so if I was at the office, I would go in my back room and I would crouch behind a table and like huddle down and be like, just suffer it through it until it passed. And then I would get back out and do things. Now I wasn't like really overweight, but I was carrying at least another 15, 20 pounds that I didn't have before that. Again, Mm -hmm. I was really, really active. I was eating super clean. I was taking just a shit ton of supplements of 30. I had over 35 different supplements I was taking. Right. Oh Cause well, you know, all your friends are, you know, chiropractors or osteopaths or naturopaths or acupuncture. Right. And they're like, Oh, take this thing. Oh, take this thing. You need this. You need this. So even though you were working out, you still gained like 15, 20 pounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is after having okay. hyperthyroidism. Yeah. So so you have to, to be, there's to be something really messed up for you to be really little, messed up. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'd never had this before. And here's it. So my husband, snip, snip, we're good. Right. Like no more. Good. I don't have to worry about you. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, my hormones went completely berserk and then the cysts happened and I just couldn't keep going with my life sometimes. And that's what really bothered me. At one point, my husband, like, he put me in the car and took me to the ER because he was so worried. He was like, this isn't okay. You're not okay. I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. No, go away. <laughs> We're the worst. Like, doctors are the worst patients. <laughs> yeah, we really are. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. I was like, I'm doing all the things, right? Well, the ER doctor was, and I know a lot of women have this experience. He was just not helpful. He was, um, he was like, well, nothing you do is going to help. Here's your birth control. Here's your Vicodin that's what you need. And I was like, so I don't want birth control anymore in my life. No more of that. And Vicodin, that's it all day, every day. Vicodin. That sounds terrible. I'm not going to do, I was like, I'm not even going to fill this prescription. So keep it. And he's like, well, I don't even know why you came in then, but I was like, okay, sir. You know, my husband made me come. (laughs) But I, um, it's so funny. I, 
I sometimes have people ask like, oh, you know, what is it that, you know, why is it that you do what you do? And I, you know, I, used, I used to answer like, I love to serve women and educating women's health and all these other things. And really with going through this story, I, I'm like, you know what, why I really do what I do and why I got started is because of rage, absolute, you know, unending rage for how women are treated in healthcare. And I couldn't believe this, like, just shit show of a experience I had in the ER. The doc didn't listen. He didn't offer me any help, like real help. I was like, this isn't a, pr-. you know, I want to know why this is happening. I didn't have this before. I have it now. Mm-hmm. What can I do? And there was no answer for me. So I went home and just started researching. I started diving into the history of nutrition um, different research articles. I started diving into Eastern medicine and how um, other countries deal with women's health. And in that, I found that, you know, and we're learning more and more about this, that like the history of healthcare is all set up for men. It's not set up for women. Studies are done on men. Studies are done on ma- male mice. They don't even include female mice. So interesting. Yeah. Like there was even a 70 year aging study that was conducted over, you know, over like hundreds of thousands of participants in this aging study. All they're doing is studying how the human body ages. Guess how many women were a part of that study? How many? Zero? Zero. It sounds like bad science. Bad, exactly. Bad science. Women are not included. You just assume that it's the same? Yes. And it's the same for kids too. This is another reason I'm so passionate because when women, women are the drivers of healthcare in their own homes and women are in charge of typically the healthcare of the kids. And it's the same for women and it's the same for kids. They don't test on kids. They take an adult dosage and they cut it in half and they call that equivalent for a kid dose. They test pharmaceuticals on men that are 140 pounds and they call that equivalent to a female body. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. It's what? ridiculous. So think about <laughs> there. I mean, there was, it wasn't even until 1993 that a law passed that women can even be allowed to be a part of pharmaceutical studies before that time women weren't allowed. So think of all the birth control, all the medication. Because they were worried that like they might jack up um, in their experiments. Like, Oh, they might not be able to have babies if we mess with them too much. Uh, no, it no. was, it was about money. Because women have a hormonal cycle, so it takes longer. Same thing for mice. It, female mice go through a hormonal cycle, so it takes longer, like three times as long to collect accurate data on female mice versus male mice. Interesting. So it yeah. takes longer, which means it's more money. It costs more. Mm-hmm. It costs more to test on women than it does on men. So they just take men that are you know, smaller stature and saying, oh, it's a female. It's the same there thing. You know. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing right? Yep. So I, I dove into this. That there was more information on pharmaceuticals out there at first that I found, but then I started diving into like health practices, um, nutrition information, exercise recommendations. All of these things are researched on the male body. The nutrition label that's on any food product in the U.S. Mm-hmm. is for a 44-year-old healthy male. Oh. Yeah. When okay. you go to the grocery store, do you yeah. see a lot of guys like looking at yeah, levels, right? like, yeah. oh my God, look yeah. at the percentage here, getting all of my magnesium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, guys don't care. They no. Don't care. no. Okay. That makes sense. So right? you started doing all this research. Yeah. Yeah. Started doing all this research and realized that everything was set up for women to fail, which is where I was like, this is, this is why I'm having problems with my hormones. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything wrong. Did you I'm not an unhealthy person. Tested during this point yet or not yet? Um, they did basic, very basic blood work. And they were like, well, your liver seems okay. Your gallbladder is okay. We don't know. We okay. don't know what's happening. You know, your white blood count is fine. You're fine. You're not anemic. You're okay. Yeah. It is and crazy I, to me still. Yeah that um we i don't i i don't understand enough about like lab work obviously but um it must be really hard to test hormones or something because like i think that every woman going in for 
migraines, infertility, um, adrenal fatigue, pretty much like, I don't know, and heart palpitations, asthma, like let's insomnia, let's just throw, you know, all this stuff in that should just be standard of like, let's take a look at how your hormones are doing. And that's yeah. the fact that it's not is just very confusing. And again, I just want to play devil's advocate of like, it must be really hard and expensive. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, that's why. That's why. So with all of this research, with all of this information, I got a little angry and I was like, this is crap. So I started, I started looking at how other countries, other cultures really work with the women's health and women's bodies, everything else. Um, and started looking into like more Ayurveda and how they really address working with hormones in the female body that way. So what I started blending and implementing then was uh, a blend of not only doing a hormone detox to reset, but then also I started eating for my hormones and cycle, which was just, okay, here's good information on nutrition, you know, good macro information, basics, you know, all that stuff. And I'm going to layer in how this affects estrogen here, how this affects progesterone here. How can we help create and maintain the correct amount of estrogen and progesterone throughout the month while still eating clean, healthy, and implementing all of the current up-to-date nutrition information that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, following that meal guide, following a meal plan like that, I not only regulated my cycle, got rid of any PCOS symptoms that I had, got rid of my cysts. I have not had a cyst and my youngest is nine now. So, you know, I'm over, she's almost 10. So eight years, not had a cyst return. Um, I, you know, PMS symptoms gone. All okay. these other we things. To, we are, we're definitely going to dig into this then. Cause I'm like, okay. So yeah. first start with a hormone detox. Yep. So yeah. what is involved in that? Like, does that, cause I noticed you're not mentoring, mentioning, you haven't mentioned testosterone and that is a big thing in women too, isn't it? It can be. It can be, but a lot of times, so I do Dutch testing for a lot of women. Um, What's that? Dutch, du- oh my God, you're going to go down a rabbit hole. When you- Dutch, t- it's a dried urine. Um, dried, dried urine? Dried urine test that tests the hormone metabolites. That, just the, Google Dutch test, um, okay. precision analytics. They're fantastic. Um, but at the time, I didn't have a Dutch test. All I knew was, you know, what I had learned, what I knew about, how estrogen and progesterone and testosterone get detoxed and, you know, deactivated detox and eliminated from the body. So now I do Dutch tests just so I know exactly where things like testosterone are at. Cause some women, even though they have messed up estrogens and progesterone, they actually have lower testosterone that cause issues, cause fatigue issues, muscle building issues, all that stuff. So that's where, you know, that gives you a really clear picture there. But, um, for hormone detoxing, the two like basic things to focus on are liver and bowels. Okay. All of them get processed by the liver and then it's got to be eliminated through your bowels. A lot of people think, oh my gosh, yes, it's liver, da, 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 liver, 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 great. But if you're not pooping, that estrogen gets re-uploaded into your system every day. And if it gets re-uploaded, it's so much easier for your body to absorb it in fat cells. And then fat cells are so dynamic and cool that they decide to start creating their own estrogen too on top of it. Oh my gosh. So this little okay. pr- problem. So I'm going to pretend to be a lay person for a second. Like I totally understand and know all this stuff because I'm a doctor. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so when is detoxing. So, okay. All right. What question am I asking here? So when you have excess of something, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, your liver stores it. So your liver is supposed to, okay. you know, go through phase one of detoxification and processing it. Yep. And then it'll, it's supposed to be eliminated. That's how it gets able to be in a, in a um, form that you can poop out. If your liver doesn't do its job, it can't, it's not in a form that you can poop out. Okay. Essentially. So then is the detox only for if you have an excess of something? Not necessarily. Okay, so it um, would still help if you have a depletion of something. Yeah, because there's like, you know, a bunch of different types of estrogens. Um, and sometimes you might show that you're higher in like your E2, 
but really low in E1. And it's really the metabolite pathway of that that needs to be balanced. So that's, that's why I love the Dutch test because it shows you the exact pathway and then gives you, okay, so you actually should not be tasting DIM. DIM is actually going to cause more of a problem where a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you have a hormone problem, take some DIM. It's great. Well, What's I'm DIM? Gonna, um, <laughs> The supplement for, you know, then I know, I know, Sorry. I mean, think other people might not, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, these are the things like I was taking chase three, black cohosh, dim. Mm-hmm. I was taking like all these female red ba- raspberry, yeah. you know, all the female things. I was taking all of them and I should not have been because I didn't know exactly where my pathways were. So that's a mistake people make in terms of, and I did the same thing where, oh my gosh, there's a problem. I'm just going to take all the things for this quarter. This one says estrogen balance on it. This one says hormone balance on it. Let me take it. Let me take it. And we already know you have a pill problem because you already admitted you're taking like 35 supplements a year ago. Like, so <laughs> you, this just, you fed right into this. I did, right? Wouldn't take okay, that much. But... <laughs> First of all, uh, at some point you should let me know, just like I'm assuming on your podcast, you, which we haven't even gotten to that point yet. Um, oh you have like a, a much more detailed entire episode on oh, yeah. this. Like, do you know offhand what number it is? No uh, episode on my podcast. Yeah. yeah. Where you really go. Okay. Let no, me, I have a YouTube channel after this and I'll put it in the show notes of like, yeah. if there's like an uh, episode that you really go into detail talking about like the detox or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Another hormone question. Mm -hmm. are do they work like a seesaw so like if you are low in estrogen you're high in progesterone and if you're low in progesterone you're high in estrogen um that's a really good question sometimes okay but not necessarily not necessarily and that's another thing too that a lot of women get caught up and they think oh i'm estrogen dominant that means my estrogens are high and my progesterones are low not necessarily sometimes your progesterones are high as well Okay. Um, so it, so it really, it really just depends. And sometimes it's just again about resetting everything and getting your, I mean, your body is designed to heal itself. So where a lot of women get caught up in the pr- problem is that it's a, it's a smaller problem that builds up over a course of time and your liver gets backlogged in, you know, processing and metabolizing all of this hormone. So it's like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, right? Like if you were asked to carry, you know, a soup can, it's not a problem. I can carry a soup can. But if every five minutes you get asked to carry a soup can mm-hmm. for a while, you're like, I can't, I can't carry all the stuff anymore. And now it's overloaded. That's what happens to your system over a period of time. So, um, so do, going through that hormone detox. Is and is it worse? Helpful. Like, would, do you think that, um, I mean, I would assume in general, any 30 year old woman should probably be looking at it, but like, if you were on the pill, cause like I was on the pill from like 16 to 24 type of thing. Like, is it more likely that my body needs a detox or yeah. not necessarily? Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Because again, the purpose of having a cycle is that your body goes through this whole like build up and shed and, and um, renewal every month. And without that, with having like a false, you know, bleed with having that false bleed, you're not actually doing that full hormone thing. Your, your ovaries are lying dormant, but they don't get to go through that full process every month. So, Mm. yep. All right, cool. This is like, I'm surprised I'm not like under the table, like Googling where I can get Dutch testing. Okay. So (laughs) you started to learn how to eat for your cycle. Yes. Yeah. So that was, so I starting with the hormone detox and then I implemented just to maintain my hormone levels and keep everything even Steven as much as possible. And we have this misconception too. And I do this when I do talks on this. A lot of times I'll talk about the ebb and flow of hormones throughout the month. You can always picture like, oh, it goes up and down the estrogens, the progesterones, all that stuff. Right. And when we think of hormone balancing, we think of, oh, it should be like, like you said, like a scale. Oh, it should be even. That, nope, that's the male body. The male body is the same just about every day. Female body, you know, shifts and changes so much week to week that you really have four different bodies throughout the month, four different reactions. And estrogen reacts completely different to stress, to muscle building, your digestive system's different. Everything is so different that with those four bodies throughout the month, you can really eat in alignment with them to not only help them 
not only help your system create and maintain the correct amount of estrogen and progesterone throughout the month, but also to get the most out of life, Mm -hmm. to help your digestive system, to, to make sure that you're fueling properly. When your body is higher in progesterone, you know, especially after ovulation, progesterone rises. So should I back up? Sorry. No, okay. no. This is, I'm obsessed with this. I want to talk through all four bodies. Okay. Like, so I'm assuming you, have you read Kate Northrup's Do Less? Yes. Okay. So like I read that book and was like, oh, I'm obsessed and tried like figuring it out with my life. It didn't work because I'd be like mid cycle. But I think I have a major like hormone issue um, because I'm reading it. And I'm like, okay, this is week two. I'm supposed to feel like I can conquer the world. And I'm at the gym and I'm just like, I feel like I'm about to get my period tomorrow. And I'm not getting, I don't, but I'm like, I'm so, Kate said I'm supposed to feel amazing right now. And ah. I don't. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. I would love to talk through each okay. of the four bodies and stuff. Yes. Yes. Okay. So day one is the first day of your period. It's actual bleeding. Also note, I always mention this too, because this is important for a lot of women. If you start bleeding on day one, and then all of a sudden your period stops for a day or a day and a half, and then starts up again, that's adrenal fatigue. Oh, shit. (laughs) Did I just answer your question? Well, no, you're just more confirming a theory that my husband has, that like, I need to learn how to rest more. And that anyways, okay. Yeah. So just a signal, your body and its, and its hormonal cycle gives you so many clues. Again, we're not told this stuff. We're not told it. Oh. We get that one dumb class in fifth grade. And then that's it. So, you know, for women who are like, oh my God, I didn't know. Of course you didn't know. No one knows. So this is why I do this. this Your doctor doesn't even really know. He's like, yeah. I don't know. Try the pill. It stabilizes things. Yeah. Right. Mm, stabilizes. Okay. What if you have, <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what if your, so my period in the last two years has changed crazy. And I just, I'm like, oh, this must be a thing because I'm 33 and that's what happens. Um, and I will have like two to three hmm, moderate days. Like it used to be very like super tampon on day one, medium tampon day two and three, pretty much light tampon day four or five. At this point, I have lost any man who has stuck with us at this point in the podcast. They're like, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Done. So now it is like, basically I use a moon cup, so I can't really make the, I'll make a tampon analogy of what I think. It's like kind of like moderate or like mild to moderate for three days, one heavy day. And then it's like done. What's Mm -hmm. up with that? That's weird. That's hormones. My hormones are messed up. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So what you describe the first time of having it be like heavier at the beginning and then tapering tapering down, that's the more typical flow pattern we'll say and is that um, healthy like yeah indicative okay yep because and so think about it as your when your period starts you basically have a complete shift in hormones and i'm making a movement with my hands that you guys can't see nobody else can um, see i am it doesn't matter the show's for me <laughs> <laughs> but at this point basically between days one and three you actually have very little estrogen progesterone in your body and your testosterone should be about the same right? So everything is like low level hormone, all that stuff. And that's so that your period can start. Your okay. period starts and the hormones can re rework themselves. Everything begins, right? So if you have that bigger shift and it you know happens all of a sudden, um, that means that your system is doing that correctly in the correct pattern. Um, some women, if it happens too fast, or your system is uh, sensitive to hormone changes, or you have autoimmune issues, a lot of women will get headaches, migraines at this um, shift. So like near or right at the onset of their period or at um, end or at ovulation, because of that major shift, it's like a, you get hit by a truck of hormones. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, so that's a normal pattern. But with it, kind of starting and then oh here it is oh there it goes nope it's not here anymore oh there it is again 
that's this up and down and your hormones aren't fully shifting over like they should, like it should just, it should just, you should move into the next phase and stay there. It means that there's a little bit of a wobble in that hormone shift. Does that make sense? Does it? So, okay, we are going to talk about the the uh, first body, but quick question. So what time of the month do you get your Dutch testing or does it really not matter? Are they like, you just need to know when your last period was? Yeah, they tell you. They tell you. Oh. It's about, it's between days like 19 and 24 that you're supposed to be taking like the typical Dutch test because they want your progesterone there. You'll do still, I have to have- dry my own urine? No, you like pee on the strip and you let it dry. And then Oh, I was picturing like oh, like okay. you have to pee in a cup and let it dry. I don't know. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I assumed <laughs> somebody I would figure it out. I figured YouTube was gonna tell me. But like I pictured what I was picturing was like a placenta encapsulation. Oh. Did you ever encapsulate your placenta? No, I had yeah. I had emergency section I swear, like and take that out too um so <laughs> they, they would let me keep anything they wouldn't even I let me gave, watch <laughs> I gave my placenta to my doula and she like did some freeze dry dehydration thing and then like it into a powder and then put it into pills so I didn't have to be like a weirdo eating chunks of an organ I was just a weirdo eating dehydrated placenta in a pill oh. so that's what I was picturing for dehydrated urine not that I was going to consume it, but I was like, oh, but there's like a freeze dry process, but no, it's just drying on the stick. Yeah. All right. To that point, historically, another weird fact, again, I tell, I'm telling you, I have spent years researching all this stuff because I started researching this a long time ago. There used to be, this is how they used to treat hormones. They used to make like in ancient Egypt, they made slaves pee in troughs and they would let it dry and they would take the crystals. And they would feed it to the pharaohs to increase their testosterones and libidos. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually a thing where your brain was going. That's actually yeah. a thing that they used to do. All right. So anyway, day one, anyway. Of, bleeding. Day one of bleeding. How am I eating? <laughs> day, one. <laughs> um, day one of bleeding. So it should be your period onsets, everything else. Um, and that... With the hormone levels shifting and changing. Now, if you have a hormonal issue, sometimes women will feel like garbage. Like you'll feel exhausted. You'll feel like headache, upset stomach, all that stuff. You also, it's very typical to have loose stools Mm -hmm. um, around that time. Again, that's that shift in hormone and your liver processing a bunch of that hormone out, which it should. So sometimes women will notice, oh my God, I have diarrhea. Like the day before my period or the day of that starts. What the heck? Is that normal? Totally normal and good. Um, increase in urine output, increase in prostaglandins, all these other things. So totally normal. And for the first three days, you know, three, four days ish, while those hormones are low, that's, you know, kind of where you're at. So, you know, Eastern medicine wise, a lot of times people will say, nourish the body, feed the body, fuel the body. Yes. Make sure you're staying hydrated. So nutritionally, you know, healthy fats, lots of proteins, stay hydrated that type of a thing. But in terms of activity, I mean, as long as you feel okay, it shouldn't hold you up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, after that, wait, so like when you say nourish the body, like cheeseburgers, (laughs) mac and cheese, like all the things, (laughs) (laughs) nutrient and foods are best. Um, and I need to eat that way all month. (laughs) <laughs> so we so one of the things I always talk about is protein pacing protein pacing getting in proteins regularly throughout the day so if you're eating a breakfast snack lunch snack dinner that you're getting at least 20 grams of protein with each meal meal and snack that way by the end of the day you're getting at least 100 grams of protein this is not too much protein for the body women are often very deficient in protein Again, going back to research, our protein recommendations from the time we're born, and then when we reach about age seven, they actually split from male recommendations. So seven-year-old kids, boys, are recommended to get more food, more nutrient, more protein than seven-year-old girls. It's because they want to keep us weak. (laughs) (laughs) That one's a different podcast. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But 
but it so sounds like, like, like well, how is this a thing? Like women go yeah. through development earlier than men. Why wouldn't you at least give us the same nutrients throughout pu- yeah. through puberty? Duh. No, no. Yeah. They recommend, yeah. recommend less proteins and nutrients all the way up. When women hit 14, that's when the recommendation stops and you're recommended to get the same amount of protein and nutrients through the rest of your life. Only changing if you get pregnant and then the recommendation is, oh, you might need 300 more calories. 300 more calories. <laughs> yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm, okay. All so, right. So protein pacing is important all the protein time. Protein pacing is important all the time. And this is the time where it can be really, really beneficial because with this hormone shift and change, you're going to have more energy. You're going to have more nutrient in your body. You're not going to have cravings, things like that, that cravings and things like that come from a nutrient depletion. So yeah. because like I legit, I'm trying to, I've tried to explain this to my husband because I'm like, because he's in the best way possible. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what he said, but he was nicer about it. He said, <laughs> like, is it possible that it's in your mind that you need the crackers? Okay. He didn't say that. Don't send Kirby hate mail. Um, but like, that's what my PMS self heard. And I was like, no, I've thought about that actually. But like my body feels like it needs crackers to survive the night. And, you know, and I'm like, I don't you know it's so that's also not normal. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a sign and signal of nutrient depletion. Also note, this is also higher. I have found women with a history of being on the pill mm. because being on the pill depletes their body of specific nutrients. And those are, um, some of them are like magnesium, right? But oh. your, your body gets enough calcium. Um, there's actually a supplement. It's called the other pill Ooh. that's designed and specifically has the vitamins and minerals and nutrients that your body gets depleted in while you're on the pill. Number one side effect complaint for women on the pill comes from nutrient depletion. And it's been like that since the pill came out. So for decades. So they finally developed, a company was finally smart, and they developed a supplement called The Other Pill that literally is all these nutrients that your body's depleted in. They've got tons of great research on it. You know, you can Google it. Um and then come back and listen to the rest of the podcast. You're right. But it's but it's it's so fascinating because that's what happens so much for women. By the time you get to, you know, a few days before your period and then on your period, you get all these horrific cravings, symptoms, things where you're like, something's wrong. I'm not even I'm not even in control of how my brain is working. It's like I wasn't I didn't think I was hungry or was trying so hard to stick to a clean diet. And it's like all of a sudden you wake up in your pantry and you've eaten half a bag of chips. Yep. And you're like, what the hell happened to me? You're not in control of your body. It's not about willpower at that point. Your brain is trying to keep you alive because in some fashion, you're nutrient depleted because we haven't been told how to work with our hormones and cycle. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Fun, All right. right. Body too. <laughs> body too. So period is done. Oh, also note that in terms of weighing yourself, because this is something I, I train women on with weight loss. Everything happens different in men and women. If you're going to weigh yourself, Weigh yourself once during the month and then compare that weight to where you were last month because you have four different bodies a month. When you have your period or the day before it starts, I mean, your uterus is twice as big. You have more blood volume in your body. You should weigh heavier than you do when you ovulate, Mm -hmm. right? So our systems are dynamic and changing, but women will weigh themselves throughout the month and think, yay, look, I lost a pound. Dang it, I gained a pound. Crap, I'm doing something Mm -hmm. wrong. I better cut what I'm eating and go to the gym more and do more cardio. And that's actually the opposite of what you should be doing because you should weigh more at the end of the month before your period starts than you do after your period. So when you're done with your period and everything else, that's actually when your body is the quote unquote lightest. So maybe day seven. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also when you have some of the most energy, estrogen rises. So estrogen then body two, you really have a lot of, um, energy, digestive systems working better. Your body can build muscle quicker. So lifting heavier, recovery is better. If you go for a run in week two, you're gonna be like, I'm killing it right now. This is awesome. Again, this is for people who have a good hormonal balance. Normal. And I'm like, I, but the, the question came up of like, well, how, oh, we sure already answered that. You're messed yeah. up. Why yes. isn't it like that for me? Because your estrogens are probably really off. Okay. Um, so then, okay. So everything is like, you should be like, this is the best ever during week two. And then ovulation happens and estrogen starts to drop and progesterone rises. Now, oftentimes what women notice is that during this 
third week, so days 15 to 21, that can be some of the hardest uh, time in your hormonal cycle. If your hormones are balanced correctly, because that's some of the highest peak of progesterone, progesterone slows down your digestive system. It's going to deplete your energy more. Um, it's going to be harder to recover from workouts. It's, uh, you know, you're just, you're going to be fatigued more throughout the day. Sometimes you get more brain fog during this point. So your progesterones are highest, but you still have some estrogens there. So that balance, that, that having both of them there is real hard for your system to handle. Um, I noticed this. I, I, so I started tracking this for myself just for fun. You know, I did like a, I, you know, I track everything and I was tracking like a mood thing and I was like, yeah, I'm pretty happy. But I'd be, there'd be like one day where I'd be like, Oh my God, I can't handle my husband. Like in my face. Like, I don't like, he always wants to like come near me and like be right here and be like yeah. so close next to me. And I'm like, get I like, I just, I can't. And it's day 21 and day 22. Got it. I can't. He's just, I'm like, Oh my God, my face bubble needs to grow by about three feet for those days. <laughs> And then I'm fine. And then yep. it's cool. But I was thinking I was crazy or like I was so mean. Like, ah, nope. It's just the hormonal time. It's cool. We'll, we'll get fine. And that's a nor- So knowing more about your body helps you know more about how things work and function. So you don't feel crazy because you're not. You just mm-hmm. have four different bodies throughout the month that you didn't yep. realize were there. Yeah. So during body three, are, you said like digestion slow. So like, are you supposed to eat like easier digestible food? Or- yeah. So the things that I talk about, and again, I have a YouTube channel where I go through and like draw pictures and show all this stuff because I'm a very visual person. So there's a ton of resources there on it. Um, But yeah, warming foods. So I talk about cooling foods during the estrogen phase. Which is the first two weeks? Yep. Yep. And that's going to match with your lower basal body temperature there too. And then your basal body temperature rises after you ovulate, and then you match that by eating warming foods. That's going to help your digestive system, help break things down easier, everything else. Got it. Now, if you're thinking in the back of your head, well, wait, I eat cooler when my body temperature is lower, and then okay, when my yeah, body temperature is exactly higher. Yeah, that makes sense, but wouldn't that make it worse? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, oh my God, that cooling doesn't We want to balance cool. it. We want, right. we want, and it's like, no, that's the male mindset of how the body would work. The female body is supposed to be a lower temperature and higher temperature. Oh, so you're just supporting, like the body is innately doing what it is good for it. Yeah. So it's almost like um, giving Tylenol for a fever where it's like, no, you don't want to lower. You want to support what the body. Oh my gosh. Exactly. Oh my God. Light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then body four. Body four. So this is the point where both like estrogen really tapers off down and progesterone really starts to come down. Um, And this is also a point in, you know, a lot of women have discomfort and everything. You know, again, you have more blood volume, your uterus grows twice the size, you, your um, body doesn't upload hydration the same way. You have Mm. have more electrolytes, more minerals. So a lot of women will feel bloated or puffy or whatever. And they're like, you need to take more electrolytes. Yeah. Yeah. Because your body can't upload the hydration into your cells the same way when progesterone is higher. So we're drinking all this water, right? I mean, I can't even tell you how many dumb articles I've read before being like, oh my God, before my period, I get so bloated. Drink more water, that helps. You're actually causing more bloat because the hydration's not getting into the cell because it needs the electrolyte to do that. Fascinating. Yeah. So I, I hydrate by doing like, a water bottle of water, and then a water bottle of electrolyte. And I alternate throughout the day. Game changer. And just, you know, reference of it takes three full days to fully hydrate the body. So if you're behind, if you're like, oh, crap, I'm on day 24 right now. (laughs) I need to be hydrating. And you do it for a day and you're like, I don't know if this really helps. It takes three days. So it will shift and change from there. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of women, if you are having issues the week before your period, it's usually due to dehydration because you're not properly hydrated, nutrient depletion because you haven't got the right um, like proteins, uh, vitamins, things like that. And you're not acknowledging that your system needs 300 to 500 more calories a day during that time frame as well. Why? It needs more food. It needs more calories. 
Yeah, it needs more food. It needs more calorie progesterone. So is my metabolism going to take care of that or am I going to get fat? <laughs> no, your, so your metabolism takes care of that. Okay. Your, you teach your system because without it, your, your body's saying, oh God, it's right. If you're eating the same all month long, at some point in the cycle, your body's going to say, oh crap, I'm not getting enough nutrients. That's where all those symptoms and things come from. Mm-hmm. When you actually increase the nutrient food that you're eating, the body's like, oh yes, here we go. It knows what to do with it. And you start having a better cycle, increased metabolism overall, all that stuff. Yeah. Read three to 500 more calories of nutrient dense food. Yeah. Not an excuse to be like, Dr. Beth said. <laughs> yeah. A bag of chips. I <laughs> <have> a pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an extra protein bar or a protein yeah. shake or something like an extra one. And, and what, um, what's so fascinating is that when you start doing this, you're like, Oh my gosh, I do feel better. I have more energy. I'm noticing more mental clarity. Like this is a game changer. And you just feel so different in your body, which means you increase your performance, you increase your production, everything changes from there. Yeah. You are just a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> I feel like I could talk to you for hours and just be we like, could. <laughs> we really could. Um, okay. So I would love, oh my gosh, we're going to have to bring you back. This is what we're going to do. Because we, can, we totally can. Cause this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is it like really, really beginning. is. And like, I try and keep episodes like a tangible amount for people on their yeah. things. We're just going to have to have you come back. Tell people where they can get okay you brought up the youtube like tell people like all the places where they can get information i'm on the interweb yes so it's (laughs) dr beth westy yeah Dr. Beth Westy. again there's the social awkwardness right there oh my god i'm gonna meet new people (laughs) (laughs) you don't have to talk to them it's fine (laughs) um dr beth westy w-e-s-t-i-e like the dog um and I am on Facebook, Instagram, and I have a website, which is Dr. Beth Westy. There, you can go through all the programs I have, what I talk about with nutrition, um, Dutch testing. I do Dutch testing. If you're like, oh my God, I need one, you can order a Dutch test there through me. Oh, um, and then, I, and then my YouTube channel, Dr. Beth Westy, is uh, just years of video explaining a ton of stuff. Like, if you're like, what if you have endometriosis? What if you have Hashimoto's? You know, type it in there. I've probably done a video on it. Um, and then I, I have a book, The Female Fat Solution, that's on Amazon. And then my podcast is called The Female Health Solution, mm-hmm. where I talk about a lot of stuff too. Yeah. So, a lot of yeah. really interesting stuff. More stuff there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Thank you so much. This has been like very helpful. I always joke that when I have people on the show, usually it just ends up turning into like my therapy session. Like I know that like I'm supposed to make like what do the listeners need to hear? But I'm always just like leaning in. Like if you guys can see, I'm always like, oh, that is beneficial to me and my life because of this. So like, yeah, yeah, this was really, really great. And um. I, I'm trying to come up with a less basic bitch way to say like, this was mind blowing. Um, but I can't. it was really, really helpful and beneficial information. I appreciate it. Good. good. I will warn you that. So here's, here's my warning for people that like, this is the start, right? Like this is like, a rabbit hole. yeah, yes, this is you all of a sudden uncovered a rabbit hole and you're about to fall down it. The, the whole, you know, Alice in Wonderland theme, it, it, you're going to take left turns and go a deeper dive. It's all going to be good. It can be overwhelming. There's sometimes guilt and shame feelings about things you've done to your body in the past that you didn't know weren't mm-hmm. helpful. That's okay. Um, but just keep going. And then my mission is just to keep sharing this info with women so that they know more. This is not taught to us. This is not mainstream at all. So the more women know, even some of this basic info, the more we can do to help keep our bodies healthy, functioning, and move forward. You know? Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for absolutely. having me. This is And so- we're only like two hours apart. So we should like yeah. legit get coffee in real life. We totally could. Yeah. So. We totally could. Well, good luck uh, with your kids. Uh, people don't know that, like, yeah, it's like Friday the 13th and it's coronavirus 
craziness happening right now. So good luck with your kids may, possibly doing homeschooling. Yeah, who knows? Or virtual schooling next week. So I don't. Uh, we're fine. Okay, everything's oh, gonna be fine. You'll know this. It's okay. We all need to play Taylor Swift. You need to calm down. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my gosh. And Lauren, I would love to have you on my podcast. Yeah. I'm going to have to like um, get good at something because I won't be able to pretend like uh, I am playing the lay person. People will be like, Beth, why'd you have this chick on? You don't know anything. <laughs> Did you say she's a doctor? <laughs> Why'd she ask what B6 is? No, I'm just joking. I know what B6 is. I, I like I'm having sure. other, I actually have a lot of Kairos that listen, because I'm a Kairo, right? I have a lot of Kairos that listen. So I always just like to, you know, bring other female Kairos, talk about their business experience, everything else, and share their stories. So it's great. All right. All right, She Slayers. I hope you fall in love with Dr. Beth as much as I did. Like I said, go find her podcast, The Female Health Solution. Um, DM her. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. And I will talk to you soon, Dr. Beth and everyone else. I'll see you next week. Bye.